All right, so when you see a one-half power, when you see a one-half power, a one-half power is always a square root. Okay. Go ahead. A one-third power is always a cube root. A one-fourth power is always a fourth root. So no matter what the fraction is, so if you have anything, say n, which is a number, to one over a fraction, let's go one, just second price, let's say one over um, a, then it's going to be some square root, cube root, whatever it is, but it's whatever number root that is. Now, if it's a fourth root, if it's a fourth root, we're saying what times what times what times what makes 16. I'll say it again. What times what times what times what makes 16. One times one times one times 16. Okay. Two times two is four times two is eight times two is 16. So the fourth root of 16 is Two, okay. Cube root, right? What times what times what makes eight? Two, right? This one's also got to be two, all right? Now, what we can do then is once we know that, let's write, write ourselves a little rule, okay? And write, write a little rule. Um, we'll write it down over here. If we have any number to a fractional exponent, let's say p over q, okay? That's q. Any number n to the p over q, all right? If you have a fraction as the exponent, if you have a fraction as the exponent, the top part of your fraction is always going to be the power, and the bottom part of the fraction is the root, okay? And I'll show you what this means. So I can rewrite this as the q root of n to the p. Now you might say, okay, well, I don't get it, Mr. Davies. Let's do an example, okay? Let's do an example. Let's take a look at number, let's look at f, okay? Let's look at f. Let's look at number f. Okay? This could be 27 to the 4 thirds. 27 to the power root. Let's look at e. This could be 15 to the 3 halves. Now where do you get the 2 from? Where do you get the 2, two from? Well, there's no, there's no number in here, right? But we all know that there is a number right in there. What's the number right in there? It's a 2, right? Because square root, right? Let's look at d. The same thing as 10 to the 4 fifths. The 4 is the power, and the 5 is the root. Let's look at A. This is 5 to the 3 twos. So let's do number, let's do C, letter C together, okay? Letter C. That's my power, that's my root. So I'll write as 9 to the 2 thirds. Power, so it becomes fractional exponents. It's this easy. That number is the top part of the fraction. That number is the bottom part of the fraction. It is a number that has an exponent that's a fraction. Okay, it's a number that's going to have an exponent that's a fraction. Okay, uh, b. It's going to be four to the two four. See how that works? It's really not that bad. Okay, ready to turn the page? That was pretty simple. Okay, turn the page. Okay. Now, on the second page, we're going to go just the opposite, okay? So this is my root, and that's my power. I'm going to go cube root of 8 squared. Cube root of 8 squared. 
b. It's going to be the square root of 6 to the 5th. It's going to be the square root of 6 to the 5th. I don't really need the 2 there because we know if it's a square root, the 2 is kind of already there. We just don't write it. Okay, if I look at c, it's going to be the 4th root because the bottom part of the fraction becomes the root 12 to the third power. It's not that hard, is it? D is going to be the square root, but we don't need the 2 there, right? If it's square root, you don't need it, but I'll put, there, put it in there. Anyway, okay. 10 to the power of 3. See how it works? Yep. 16, or sorry, E. It's going to be the square root, right? Because the bottom part of the fraction is the root 16 to the power of 3. Okay, 20. So we'll take F is going to be the fifth root, right? The fifth root of 20 to the sixth, okay? Now, we can let our calculator do these. So if we need an answer, if this is round the two decimal places, then you know if the question says round the two decimal places, then you know that they're going to accept decimal answers, okay? They don't have to be exact. So you can just use these, do these in your calculator. So if I took, for instance, on my calculator, if I did 8 to the power of 2 divided by 3, okay, you guys see that? 8 to the 2 thirds, let me scoot over. Mm -hmm. 8 to the 2 thirds, right? 4. If I wanted to do, if I wanted to do 6 to the power of, right? 5 divided by 2, I get an answer of about 88.18. Okay, so we can do that on our calculator pretty easily, right? Just let our calculator the work. Okay, now, some of these, though, you can do without a calculator. You can actually do it using your brains, which you guys have great brains. You really do. So if it says without using a calculator, how can we do this without a, using a calculator? Because we're smart. So check it out. You can do this one. 5a, square root 4 to the third power, okay? Now, this little 2 here, we don't really need because square root, but we'll put it there anyway, okay? So what is the square root of 4? What's the square root of 4? We agree? 2? TJ says 2, you guys agree? Girls, you guys agree? Square root of 4 is 2. And then 2 to the third power wow. is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. All right? Let's look at B. I take the fifth root of 32 to the fourth, okay? So, what times what times what times what times what makes 32? Actually, I think it's going to be 2. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32. So this is 2, and then 2 to the fourth is 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, 16, okay? So you can do these. Some of these you can do without a calculator. Some of these you really can do without a calculator, okay? All right, let's scoot over, all right? So, got a little bit careful. We Now they're starting to give us the stuff we need. Now, a couple of notes I want to give you, okay? So, if we have some value, some number, right, to the P over Q. I like P over Q. Eh, the book does it differently. I like P over Q, okay? Let's write this down. We know this now. The bottom number is the root, and the top number is the power, right? You guys agree with that? Okay. If it is just some number to the 1 over Q, right, then it's just going to be that root. It's just going to be the root of whatever it is, okay, to the 1 power. You don't need the 1 power, okay? And finally, one last thing that we haven't seen for a while, and that's with negative exponents, okay? Let's write negative exponents. Write this down. Okay, if you have a negative exponent, it's going to be 1 over. So, example, if I have a to the negative 1 over q, negative exponents, negative exponents is going to be 1 over. Remember that? Remember, if they're in the wrong place, we have to move them, right? 
it's just going to be 1 over the root. Oh, that's supposed to be an A. My bad. It's an A. Okay, let's turn the page and see if we can see some examples, okay? All right. All right, let's turn the page. and uh, I don't see very many negatives, but they've got them in here. Um, I want a negative one. Well, they're not giving me a good negative X one, but that's okay. We'll do a few of these, okay? Um, four. What's the answer? Well, one half means square root of 64, right? Thank you, TJ. Aren't you guys glad TJ's here? I am too. Square root of 64. I am. K5. Cube root of negative 27. Close. Close. What times what times what makes 27? What times what? Three, but how about a negative three? Because negative three times negative three times negative three. You with me, Emma? Negative times a negative times a negative, right? How about negative three, okay? Um, Go ahead. Nope. Close. Negative times negative is a positive. Then times another negative. Thank you, BJ. BJ, thank you, because that cleared up. Clarified. Okay, last one I want to do real quick before I go over here is 7. Okay, before I do 7, I'm going to highlight something so you see it. Okay. Okay, do you see the negative? You see the negative exponent? So I'm going to go 1 over, 1 over, because the negative exponent, okay? I'm going to do the square root of 49 to the third power. Okay. Am I missing something? Always. Okay, so what's the square root of 49? What is the square root of 49? Seven. Seven. So I've got 1 over 7 to the third. 7 times 7 times 7. 7 times 7 times 7. 7 times 7 times 7. 7 times 7 is 49 times 7 is 343. So the answer is 1 over 343. All right, almost done. I want to shift over to um, number 16, okay? And I'll do a few of these and we'll be done, okay? So 16, let's solve. What do you think? Divide by 6. Totally right. Divide by 6, divide by 6, okay? X cubed equals negative 1. Now what? Cube root, yes. Yes, yes. Okay. Cube root, because the cube root would cancel out the cube, wouldn't it? And I take the cube root of negative one. Now, you can have negative cube roots. You can, because a negative one times negative one times negative one is a negative one. Okay? All right. Um, 17. I'm going to do 17 real quick. Almost done. Okay, what do you think? Let's solve. No, you can't, darn it. But I could divide by 2. Let's do that. You guys okay with divide by 2? Gone. So then I still have a parentheses x plus 5 to the 4th equals 64, okay? Well, let's undo a 4th power. To undo a 4th power, what would be the opposite of a 4th power? How about a 4th root? If I take this to the fourth root, these two are opposites of each other. If I do a fourth root to a fourth power, it kind of makes them both disappear because they're opposite of each other. So I have to do the fourth root of 64 because what you do to one side, you got to do the other side, right? So the fourth root of 64, let's see, what times what times what times what makes 64? Four. four is right. Four times four is 16 times four and then... Okay. So I got an x plus 5 equals minus 5, minus 5, and I get 1, negative 1. All right, and I think I'll stop there. Okay, so 